You're listening to the Cat Breeder Sensei Says Podcast. This is your show host, April Cotito. We're back for another episode uh, about breeding pedigree cats. If you're new to the podcast, um, just wanted to let you know, you know, what this podcast is intended for. It was really designed for brand new people who don't have a mentor or want additional or supplemental information about breeding pedigree cats. And it was started because there really wasn't a place for anybody to go to get this information. For some reason, breeders are very protective and, um, you know, tight lipped about how to do this correctly so while i am not the most experienced breeder you'll ever meet that by any means i've currently been breeding kittens for five years as of 2022 so you know those people had to have way more experience than me um, they're just not willing to share so the podcast was created to share the knowledge that I have or the experience that I have whether it's you know enough or not enough I, you know that's going to be up to you to determine um, but um, a place where you can you know listen to the topics not be judged for it and hopefully gain some knowledge that you didn't have before you listen to the podcast uh, we also have a Facebook group that you are welcome to join it's called the No Judgment Zone Cat Breeder Community. It really is a safe zone. You can post your questions and you can get some answers. And judging people, looking down your nose at people, it's just not allowed in that group. It may be the only group anywhere that really enforces this community vibe and does not allow other people to just badger you to death and make you feel like the biggest loser on the planet which is kind of what you feel like in many many other groups so join our group um, come over and be a part of our positive movement that we are working towards to try to change the um, the vibe of breeders and and how much they're willing to help each other it's a very helpful community in addition, there's also a course on um, how to breed pedigree cats. It's called The Complete Guide to Breeding Pedigree Cats, and you can find that on our website at catbreedersensei.com. And um, here is a short message about that. We'll be right back after this. Do you want to learn how to become a successful breeder of pedigree cats? Now you can. For the first time ever, enroll in an online training course that takes you step-by-step -step through everything you need to know to get on the right track. Visit CatBreederSensei.com to sign up today and use code PODCAST21 to get $25 off. Okay, we're back. So you know how on Sesame Street, if you're old enough to know about that show, they used to have the word of the day. And it would be, you know, an easy word. And they would use that word all, out, all throughout the show. And so you would, by the end of the show, you would have an understanding of what that word meant. Today's word is healthy healthy cats what does that mean my opinion is that that word gets used very loosely and it gets thrown around a lot and sometimes it even gets abused well just hear me out and see if you agree let's say for example you see a post on Facebook and someone says quote my queen just had five healthy kittens, end quote. Now, if you think about this logically, there's no way to tell if those kittens are healthy or not. If they were born the average weight of a kitten and they look good and they're meowing and they're breathing correctly and they're only five hours old, there still is certainly could be something that you cannot see that makes them unhealthy. And maybe in the first couple of weeks, that's going to be surfaced and you're going to see the devastating count of fading kitten syndrome or something happens and you, it, there's just no explanation for why this kitten did not survive. And it's because the kitten wasn't healthy. So there's really no way for us to determine 
if our kittens are healthy, especially if it's the queen's first litter she's ever had and there's no history of kittens from this particular pair of cats to validate that these kittens are going to be healthy. I had a litter of four kittens born and this one boy in particular um, was the biggest kitten in the litter. He was absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, looked amazing, healthy. If they had one of those scoring things for kittens like they do for humans, he would have scored, you know, top out of the whole litter. And he didn't survive for 24 hours. He just slowly faded away and he died. And I have no idea why. Um, there was probably something developmentally that went wrong and I could not see what happened. So he wasn't healthy. Okay, let's change gears for a minute and story time. One of my first females ever, actually, it was one of my first two females, I fell in love with a pair of sisters from a breeder in Germany. And so I decided to get both of them. They arrived at the age of four months old and they were both kind of underweight. Like I could feel their ribs and their spine and uh, to me they just needed more meat on their bones. But other than that, they looked great. They were friendly. They weren't skittish at all. Their coats looked good. Um, they did not have any diarrhea, no vomiting, no signs of upper respiratory infection. I did my standard quarantine period with them. They came out just fine. However, about 45 days later, one of the sisters started sneezing. And she was sneezing a lot. She started sneezing yellow stuff. That turned into yellow stuff with blood in it. She was sneezing so hard, she was blowing these things on the wall. Of course, I took her to the vet and she was prescribed doxycycline at one point, clavamox, and you know, it would go away. This condition would go away and then maybe two or three weeks after the med round was over, it would come back. She would start sneezing again and she'd have a runny nose and she would have bloody boogers. This was just one of the sisters, not both of them. The other one is doing fine, no issues. I did a PCR test. Everything was negative. She did not have any viral infections. The next step was to do a rhinoscopy. So we did a rhinoscopy on her and discovered that she had polyps in her ear and in her throat. And they were big. And this is what was causing all of her uh, nasal discharge and excessive sneezing. So at this point, um, we decided, of course, that the polyps needed to be removed from her ear and her throat. And um, after doing tons of research, because I am a deep diver, when something comes up and I'm not familiar with it, then I go on a researching binge and I will read every single thing that I can find about this particular topic until like I'm up to my I'm up to my neck. Like I'm I'm full. I've read everything. I understand it now. And what I read and I kinda know now I that things that you read online, um, they're not always true. No, even if it's repeated information, a lot of our information on Google and blog posts and stuff is regurgitated from someone else. Just um, the word, they do a word spin and repost it. But you don't always know, you know, for a fact what, what you can believe. But I, I definitely read that polyps, if they're not removed entirely, um, or maybe even if they are, have the chance to come back. So they can just grow back um, even though you remove them. So I didn't want to take that risk. I did not want any owners of kittens from her to have to uh, be faced with the same thing. So polyps in the ear and throat. Also, um, under researching if this condition was genetic or not, it was inconclusive. 
In other words, there is no evidence that ear polyps or throat polyps are genetic or not genetic. Long story short, I decided to spay her and discontinue her from the breeding program um, at the age of seven months old and her polyps have been removed and she is um, someone's pet and she has not had any issues ever since then and she is almost five years old. If I had to do it all over again, I would do the same thing because to me, she was not healthy. So I was worried about her sister because I kept her sister who didn't have any issues. As of today, I still have that queen, and she is my absolute best queen. She has absolutely zero health issues. I've never had her to the vet for anything at all, and from her kittens that she's produced for me in my cattery, I have zero reports of any health incidences from her babies. Based on her history and her offspring, I think I can officially say that she is a healthy cat. And I would feel comfortable selling a kitten for breeding at this point from her. In that example, uh, in that story that I experienced personally, I was able to make the call early in her life that she wasn't a healthy cat and make the hard decision. Well, it wasn't really hard. It was easy decision for me to not use her in my breeding program. Maybe where some people make a bad choice is continuing to use her and then realizing later that, you know, the kittens are also dealing with issues in their life that could have been prevented. It was hard to spare her. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I had spent a lot of money on her to buy her and to get her here and all of these medical bills that I was paying for. But, you know, that's part of being a, a cat breeder. You are going to have losses and you're going to have a lot of expenses and, you know, you just have to be ready for that. And the most important part of being a good breeder is uh, making decisions like that that no one really knows about and they don't they don't really need to know about but you know about it so you know it's up to you to make those good decisions for your cattery and for your cats and for your kittens so let's talk about those dna tests for a second um, we do the dna test to pre-screen our breeding cats to make sure they are not carriers for any of those genetic diseases that no one wants their cat to ever to ever get and while we can scan and test for 50 diseases there's certainly other things that are going to come up that aren't anything that you can test for entropion interception pyometra stomatitis, FIP, cancer, autoimmune disease, IMHA. The list is long of things that can cause your cat to not be healthy and we just can't test for them. Some of which, unlike the kitten that I spayed at seven months old, don't show up until they're older, like five years old. Story time. My very first Maine Coon is currently eight years old and his name is Finley and I bought him as a pet so he was neutered when I got him. He was around four months old when he came home. He's a black tabby and basically he's always been pretty healthy. Um, he does scarf and barf so he sometimes he eats really fast and then he throws up within 10 or 15 minutes and that's just one of his peculiar eating habits. He doesn't do it all the time, but he definitely is a scarfer and barfer. Other than that though, no issues until the age of five. Finley started acting a little weird. He started kind of running on his tippy toes. He was just running around the house weird, licking his arms kind of fast and uh, hiding in the cabinets and, um, you know, this progressed until he was just kind of living in the cabinet and wouldn't come out, and I took him to the vet. Um, discovered that he had anemia, which required some further investigation, and then we discovered that he has IMHA. 
IMHA is an autoimmune disease where his body attacks his red blood cells for whatever reason. This causes him to get very sick and just anemic really quick. When they reach a certain level, they need a blood, tra a blood transfusion. So as long as you catch it in time, the treatment is steroids for a course of about four months which also is not good for a cat, but it's the only way to suppress the immune system and stop getting his body to attack his red blood cells. So he had his first incident around the age of five and we completed the course of steroids and he was fine. We did not know if it was going to come back or if this was just an isolated incident. About one year later, it came back same exact behavior, same exact scenario, the same exact treatment. So he's now had two flare-ups of IMHA and um, we are just kind of waiting to see if it happens again. If it does, then Finley will be on um, steroids long term. So basically for the rest of his life, he will have to take um, steroids, which is terrible for their organs. So in this case, is Finley a healthy cat? Mm, I'm gonna have to say no, because he's, he's still young. He's eight years old, and this started happening when he was five years old, so I would not deem him to be a healthy cat. Now, had Finley not been neutered when I got him, and let's say, for example, that I used him as one of my sires, for a few years, let's say until he was, I don't know, four and a half, and then decided to retire him, I would never know that Finley is producing kittens with this autoimmune disease, if this happens to be something that is genetic. I just wouldn't have known it because I did not retire him, hypothetically, until he was four and a half and then his problem started when he was five so now all of these kittens that are out in the world from him might potentially have inherited this autoimmune problem so as you can see it's really important to track the history of your kittens I actually have a survey that I send to every one of my owners on the kittens birthday every year and I ask them to fill it out and give me an update. And I ask them about everything I can think of. How are they socially? What condition are their gums in? Do they have any respiratory issues? Do they have any eyes, heart, lungs, hips? Um, anything, I you know, just wanna know if there's anything going on with this cat so that I can keep track of them and know my lines inside and out. So about, I don't know, about 60% of my owners actually fill this survey out for me. And it's, it's, they're fun to read because, you know, you get to learn how your kittens are growing and what their personalities are like. We ask them about personality as well. And, you know, to see if there's any issues that have come up because they don't always contact you. I certainly didn't contact Finley's breeder when, you know, we discovered he had IMHA because I don't, think it's you know any of her concern it's my concern he's my cat so um, however if she had sent me a survey I certainly would have filled it out and let her know about this and then that's something that she could have um, stored in her knowledge bank about that particular line that this cat has IMHA and it could be a um, isolated incident or maybe another cat is has shown up with it as well so that's why it's important for you to keep track of your kittens and everything that's going on with them and you know really try to find owners that are um, open to doing that for you and giving you an update every year and letting you know what's going on with the kitten so two different scenarios were covered here one where a kitten was discovered to be unhealthy at an early age and another one where a cat was discovered to be unhealthy or you know, that's, that's a weird word, um, you know, not in perfect shape for his whole entire life at the age of five, which is still kind of young, but not a kitten. So I guess my moral of the story is there's no perfect cat. You know, we're all striving to produce healthy cats, and that is certainly should be our number one goal in our cattery is to 
really, really, really try to do everything we can to make sure that we are preserving the breed and um, putting cats out into the world that are that are healthy. Um, but you know, things come up and things happen and no matter what we do to try to prevent these things with testing and and um et, et cetera um they're still going to happen and what's important to me is how you handle that as a breeder with your owner you know do you um try to help them and talk them through it um or do you avoid them and ignore them and say hey well you know your your health warranty is up i don't know what to tell you so you know that's where you as a breeder can make a difference in the world and do what's right by your kittens and your kitten owners and um, you know make the right decisions so if you have any insight on um, your experience about healthy cats and healthy kittens uh, please feel free to comment um, on our blog post, catbreedersensei.com, um, and come join our group, and we can talk about healthy cats all day. Okay, well, until the next episode, I hope to see you around, and I'll uh, talk to you later. Bye!